Hello mom, and whoever else watches these. I'm Joanna Leal, and in this video I'll be showing you two simple ways to paint ocean waves with watercolors. I'd like to start out by saying that I'm in no way a watercolor expert. I just like to experiment with different mediums and not particularly follow any rules. I hope you have fun experimenting with watercolor too. My personal advice is don't take it too seriously and just go wherever it leads you. This is meant to be like a relaxing exercise, so just let the watercolor do what the watercolor wants to do and you can experiment with that and it's sort of like a cooperative project between you and the watercolor. It kind of has a mind of its own and that's okay. For this project, I used masking tape. I didn't have the special watercolor one, sadly, so I just used the cheap alternative. Sponges. I used some that I had for ages that I got from a craft shop, but you can use a kitchen sponge if you like. Some kitchen towels to dab my brushes on. Some watercolor paper I got given by a friend. A spray bottle to activate my watercolor pans. A pencil. Some different sized brushes. A metal straw. White gouache a white jelly roll pen, Mozart watercolor pens, I selected indigo blue, turquoise, a warm light brown and Payne's grey, and of course, some clean water. We start off by taping the watercolor paper down with some masking tape. I will divide my paper in two with the tape so I can do the two paintings on the same sheet, but you can do them on two different pieces of paper if you like. I just wanted to work on them simultaneously for the purpose of filming this video. The reason we tape it down is so that the paper doesn't warp as much when it's wet, but as you will see later on, because of the paper's quality and the fact that this is cheap masking tape, it still warps a little bit, but that's okay, nothing we can't work with. Then you want to wet your paper generously with clean water and while you let your paper absorb it you can start mixing the colors. Start by spraying your watercolor pan so you can activate the paint. You can also just add water with your brush. I then dip my brush in water, pick up some of the indigo blue and mix it with a tiny bit of turquoise. You can play around with colors and try different tones and stuff. It's fun to see what colors you can create. With watercolors, I like to create saturation in layers, so initially, my colors are quite watered down when I am working on layering down the base. You can have a little bit of scrap paper near you to test out your colors before going in into the painting if you're still building up your confidence. I do this off camera a lot. Then I start creating a blue gradient from the top to bottom. I progressively add more water to my brush and keep working down to help the paint travel and do its thing. I realize here that I hadn't let the paper absorb all the water, so I brush it from the bottom to the top to work the watercolor in a bit more. If you're more patient than I am, this isn't necessary. As this is the first layer, I know I can take care of any puddles that form later on and it won't matter much. Now I take my pencil and softly line where the horizon line will be. A little rock formation in the back and the rocks in the foreground where the waves will be crashing against. I then water the paper and go in for a very watered down indigo blue where the sky is. If you go in too saturated at the start, you can clean your brush and pick some of the wet watercolor up, dabbing it in the kitchen towel and repeating until it's as light as you want it. I let the paper absorb some of the wet watercolor and then start working on the clouds by freely creating some cloud lines, dipping my paintbrush in water and fading it on one of the sides. I like to keep the edges rough on one of the sides, so I don't really blend them, but on the other side, I do with a little bit of water on my brush. That way, we can create this effect that they're layered on top of each other and fading into one another. I then pick up some of the brown paint and dilute it with water, creating a sandy tone and I lay it down on the paper at the bottom, where the waves will be touching. I use the same ombre fade technique where I lay down a line of the color I mixed and I then dip my brush in clean water and run it along the line edge to get the paint to flow with the water and create the ombre. I also add a few touches of the sand color on top of the blue. Then, I mix a little bit of Payne's grey and the brown colour to create the sort of warm grey for the rocks. Using the same ombre technique, I'm going to paint the rocks now. To create a rock-like texture, I direct the paint with a dabbing motion. I add some more Payne's grey to the mix for the background rock. Since it's further away, it makes sense to have a bluer tone to it, because it would be reflecting the sky colours. You don't want the background to be very saturated. If you notice on landscape pictures, usually the background is less saturated than the foreground. 
Then I go back to the first painting and I work on fixing the puddle that formed in the middle there by lifting the paint with some clean water and brushing it side to side and up and down until it's less evident. I add more paint at the top and work it downwards. Then I let it dry and take a little break off camera. If you want it to dry faster, you can use a hair dryer from far away so it doesn't blow the wet watercolor all over the place. Then I add yet a little bit more of paint gray to my rock color and start creating the shadows on the foreground rocks. With a metal straw, I blow the paint around creating swirly textures and experimenting a little bit with it. I create some lines too, like cracks on the rocks. I also added a little bit of shadow to the background rock, but again, keeping it lighter. Now back to the first painting, I mix some more indigo into the color I had there from before, and I start creating the waves. I lay down the saturated paint and add water to create ombres again. You can use the straw to help create a water ripple effect. I like to create the wave shapes kind of diagonally overlapping each other in some sort of zigzaggy formation. On the last wave, by the sand, I decided to experiment with some splashing effects achieved with the straw and dabbing the excess off with the sponge. Then with the same sponge, I create some sandy textures with a more saturated brown mix. Dab, dab, dab. Now, in the second painting, I brush some clean water onto the paper and let it absorb a little bit, and then I add a light indigo blue ombre to the wet area. I let that absorb for a few minutes as well, and then I make a more saturated indigo blue mix and repeat the process. On the lighter area of the ombre, I add a few random bits of deeper tones of indigo and work that paint into wavy shapes and fade it into the rest of the area. With that strong saturated mix of indigo blue, I go back to the first painting and layer the deeper tones of the waves, creating random ripples with my brush and fading them into the back of the waves by adding water to my brush and dabbing the excess off on kitchen towel. The closer I get to the foreground, the more I am diluting the saturated indigo mix as the water gets more shallow against the sand. Now I mix some paints gray with a little dab of brown and I dip my sponge into it and create some texture on the rocks of the second painting. For the foreground, I use a more gray and dark tone and for the black one, a muted diluted brown for a subtle effect. I wash my sponge with clean water and squeeze dry it. And then I use it to create this splashing effect on the waves, just simply dragging the sponge lightly on the edges. And now it's time to create the waves on the second painting using a well-saturated watercolor mix, mostly indigo blue with just a tiny bit of turquoise and paint gray and a medium brush, going side to side creating these lines. At first all close together but going further apart as we get close to the foreground. I stop about halfway because I want to keep this front area fairly light for now. I let it dry and then use a clean wet brush to fade the area. Now we are going to repeat the process we did before for the waves, but layering it on top of dry paper so the lines we create stay less blended. They stay with crispier edges as well. Here you can play with adding spots that are more or less saturated, variety is key. Repeat it if you feel like some darker tones are missing. I like to play around with depth a lot, so I had to add some darker spots with some paints gray, and I took the opportunity to also add some of it to the sand of the first painting. Now it's the part that literally changes everything and pulls it all together. For this I used white gouache, but you can use many different things like white acrylic, white Tipex, white ink, or even a white Posca pen. I mix the gouache with a little bit of water to make it more runny and start applying it to the front edges of the waves, where the foam would be gathering the most. 
This doesn't have to be consistent because foam in real life isn't. It gathers and bubbles in random clusters on the crest of the wave. And then add tiny ripple lines where the bubbles dissipate into the wave. You can add more water to wash to make it less opaque and fade it into the wave better. I add some dots to mimic splashing of the waves here and there. In the second painting now, I create a thick, white, uneven line on the edge of the foreground rocks and the waves. I add a few more lines to create the shape of the waves, but this time I use water to fade the edge into the wave. I dip my brush into some white gouache and lightly tap it on my finger to splash the white onto the foreground. It's about as fun as it is messy, very messy. Let that dry for a few minutes. I then mix a tiny bit of Payne's Grey into some white and create some finger-like shapes above the rocks against the white chunky line I created before to create the illusion that waves are crashing against the rock and spraying upwards. I then use my dry square brush that I totally forgot to list at the beginning of the video to lightly brush those upwards in some places. You don't want all of them to look the same. And then I take my trusty metal straw and play around to create some more ripples with the bits that haven't fully dried on the waves making that white melt further into the blue. Then I add some more splashy splashies onto it and dab off the ones I got into the background with a sponge and blend them out with a clean square brush. By this moment, I was getting sick of literally watching paint dry. So I reached out for my hair dryer and dried both pieces fully. Now, with a thicker white gouache and water mix, I add more white where I want the highlights to really pop. I then use a smaller brush dipped in white to create the wave lines on the back. And with a swiping motion of the sponge, I blend them into the background waves. Back to the first painting, I can't get enough of the splish splashy technique, so I add a few more of those to the foreground waves. And I then go in with more saturated white on the wave foam that touches the sand. I also add a little bit of brown to some of the waves to create an illusion of transparency for good measure. And this is how they look. I think they would look great as wall art, postcards, or just a cute addition to your sketchbook. I hope I gave you clear enough instructions on how to achieve this wavy look because I'm fairly new at making tutorials so I don't really know the best way of putting the instructions out there clearly and I appreciate any feedback that you may have for me please and if you have any ideas about what you would like me to create next please comment down below because that would help me loads to figure out what you guys want to see I hope you liked this tutorial if you did please don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below because that helps with the algorithm or so I heard and of course to subscribe if you'd like to see more of me thank you again and stay safe and see you next time